This is the Real Estate Power Play Podcast, getting you the information that you need to be a successful real estate investor. Hosted by Mark Monroe, Ronnie Walker, Gabe Rodarte, and me, Marty Grizzani. Combined, we've done thousands of real estate transactions. So get ready for real stories and true case studies on finding deals, growing portfolios, and making money. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the Real Estate Power Play. We got Marty uh, Grisanti here, my man. We uh, this Today, we're actually going to be talking about 2021, the things that we got going on. Um, we come to, yeah, 2020, 2021. We, uh, we come to you guys every Tuesday. We're talking real estate strategies. We're talking uh, the different things that are working in our business, lead generation, how to build relationships, all these different things that we're unpacking every Tuesday. And today we're going to dig into Marty's business. We're going to dig into my business and uh, where we started, you know, January 2021, where we are now. We want to talk about some of the key changes we've uh, implemented in our business, some of the things that have moved the needle the most, um, some of the numbers we're tracking, stories we've run into and those different things. Um, I apologize for the different layout here. I am actually having my office redone. Uh, at the moment, it's actually in the midst of painting. So I am in my living room this time. Uh, I had to make shift set up. So you guys are going to have to deal with that. So Marty, my man, how are you doing, bro? I'm doing great, man. I'm uh, My eyes are focused right on your fire right over there. You know, it's like you're about to tell a story over a open flame. You know, we're going there back. We go. <laughs> we're going back to the, you know, the, the, the middle ages, we're, we're all bundled up. We're going to hear a story. The fire's going to go. And I hope our story, <laughs> I hope our stories will maybe light some other people's fires, maybe get them going on their own business uh, on some of the stuff that they learned from us today. Who knows? Absolutely. No, I, I love that. So to kick us off, you know, the beginning of 2021, right? We, uh, we started a new year. Obviously we've had major shifts since COVID. Um, things have changed. You're up in upstate New York. Correct. I know. So things are, things are going to be different in New York than different States. Like where were you at the beginning of this year? What kind of give us a picture snapshot, Jenny, 2021, Marty, Matt, the business, what did it look like? Yeah. So we were, you know, of course our different divisions of like our flipping wholesaling and, and, property management slash our own portfolio that we manage. It, uh, it certainly was tough, you know, thinking back with COVID, you know, going into people's houses and, and all that's, you know, making appointments and, and really how do you juggle that and navigate through that. But I think we, uh, we really didn't take the gas off the pedal. You know, we saw a lot of people doing that. We saw a lot of people, kind of saying, Hey, you know, we're going to kind of just see what happens. And we said, no, I think this is a good time for us to maybe get some, gain some ground here. Right. So, so, so why, why make, why make that decision when a lot of people are kind of playing conservative, what did you guys see? Was it, was it out of necessity and like, yo, we, we have to make this work or was it? And so it was like, yo, I'm, I'm going to figure out what the key to unlock this is, or was it, I see this big opportunity. Like where, what situation did you find your, yourself in? Well, it could have been that we were maybe a little naive on the fact that, hey, this is, uh, you know, obviously we know it's affected a lot of people, but we were like, hey, like you said, we need to get this done. This is our, this yeah. is our full-time thing. Like this is how we provide food for our family. We got to make it work. So, but we got motive, we got even more motivation and momentum because we saw other people going, Hey, we're not buying right now. So we go, okay, not only do we know we need to, but we see other people not. So this is, this is awesome. It was like fuel to our fire. Like, all right, we're in this together. We're the only ones doing this. Let's go. And that was, uh, that was awesome for us. I think that that really jump started and propelled us and got us that momentum that we have been able to really kind of enjoy this ride so far and it's because we didn't let up. Um, yeah. And I, and, so, I, and I think that was important for us. Yeah. Well, and that energy of, you know what, even though things are tough, we're going to move forward. So what were, if, if there was one or two major challenges that you were facing coming into the year, thinking, okay, we're coming into this new year. 
We're familiar with COVID. We know what's happening. We're stepping on the gas. We're going to buy more properties. What were what were some of those challenges you guys were facing? Well, we have a bunch of challenges that we're still facing today. <laughs> I'm <laughs> and, with you, bro. You know, and it, it's a constant, like we talked about this offline, Ronnie, about there's always going to be problems, you know, there's always right. going to be those challenges. But, you know, some of the challenges that we brought on that we wanted to bring on were creating our own thought, leadership in regards to having our like a, that upstate New York real estate investor group that we started. Right. You know, we didn't yeah. need to do that. We probably didn't need to bring that on, but we just knew how important it was. And I'm so glad that we did because we've been able to meet and connect with a lot of like-minded individuals. We've also been able to find one of our uh, biggest buyers of uh, deals right now through that group. And, you know, I made a, a mindset shift to go, hey, I'm going to start branding me in the, in the business as, a, hey, we are the top number one deal doers and deal makers in upstate New York. And, and we're living that. And we're really, we really, we really are, uh, you know, we're going to hold this to our chest and say, yes, that's us. Right. So yeah, that's, that's been for us, that mindset shift. It wasn't, it was a challenge to go, you know what? I am a guy that can do this. I am a guy that is able to put this out on video, you know, go on video and, and record and that's very challenging for a lot of people. And it was very challenging for me, even though I, I tend to like it and I'm I think I'm good at it. Right. Still, you have imposter syndrome, right? Yeah. And uh, that was something that, you know, I still kind of work through, but that was a challenge. Well, and me. going and, and and from there, when you're building those groups, one of the things that that happens is not only do you have to be consistent, right? Like like anybody who's trying to set themselves up as is as an authority, like, hey. I want to connect with like-minded people, right? That's the idea. You start this group. I want to connect with the other players here in the network. And I want to talk about doing deals. I want to talk about the local market. I want to talk about what you're seeing. I want to talk about the opportunity that's here now, right? But when you're doing that, guys, one, this is a great opportunity no matter where you're at. If you're in a huge market that already has them, set yourself up, join the groups, connect, and create a space where people that are like-minded could connect on a Facebook and these platforms because it, it allows you not to just be the authority. You know, that's what a lot of gurus say. Hey, let's be the authority. Let's be the one they all see, but Hey, I want to connect with peers. I want to connect with other investors. And if you take that approach, one of the things that we did, even, even me and you and Mark and Gabe, we just wanted to connect together. We wanted to share experience. We wanted to connect in creating this and say, you know what? I want to hear what Marty's doing. Marty wants to hear what Ronnie's doing. Gabe wants to hear what Mark's doing. And what are we doing? And so you bring that together. But the challenge is you have to be consistent, right? I think what you're doing, you're doing the three times a week, right? Like you're jumping on three times a week. And like, hey, guys, let's get through this week. Let's start Monday strong and let's finish Friday, Friday strong. Let's have a strong Monday through Friday in here. And, and guys, if there's one thing that is not taking place in the marketplace, today, it's people being consistent, right? Think of how many emails you get of, hey, this canceled. Hey, this happened. Hey, sorry, I wasn't able to get here. Oh, I was going to do that and I forgot, right? Like, those those elements, if if and we all have it, don't get me wrong, like we all fail at it in some portion. But the more consistent we can be in our business and what we commit to, I think the bigger growth that we have. So we start off like when it sounds like is January 2021, it was like, okay, we're gonna kick up. We want to be one of the major players in today's market, right? COVID happened, people are waiting for a market crash. We're not waiting, we're gonna check the opportunity today. We want to connect with other people who are maximizing the opportunity. Absolutely. What is it going to take? Because this is my question when I think about stuff like that is, okay, what's it going to take, right? What's it going to take for me to connect with the other players? It's going to be showing the marketplace that I'm consistent, that I'm here. I'm one of the guys that you want to connect with as well as I want, and I'm open to connect with you guys too, right? And jumping in there. So what were some of the successes you saw in that? So you kicked that off January, 2021. 
where'd that leave you guys? I mean, what did did it produce the results you want? Did it do over less? What did that look like? Yeah, no, great question because to to us it was just starting that was important for us. It was just getting something going and not thinking about the result, really not thinking about that portion of it. It was like, hey, let's just put it together and let the score take care of itself, so to speak, right? Yeah. You know, let's, I'm not going to worry about the end result. I'm going to just worry about putting out content. I'm going to be, I'm just going to be focusing on the things that I can control, which is documenting my experience of real estate investing, right? That's stuff I can control. I can't control how people, how they react to it, how they take it. I hope they see it in a positive way, but I can't control that. So for us, it's just, Hey, we, we know one thing was going on, Ronnie. We knew that people wanted to have interaction. We know people like to be around other people. So I knew that I knew people were missing that. Right. So what we did is when we created the group and we, we got, you know, some, some good energy from it, we said, Hey, let's start meeting in person. So we were one of the first to actually meet. We, we were going off the grid. Oh, okay. We were, yeah. Yeah. We were actually doing, you know, live in, in person meetings and people like, Hey, can you set this up for a zoom? I go, no, we're not that we're not that we're going to go against the zoom meetups. I don't like that. It wasn't for me. So we were like, Hey, you know, and again, it's, it was, let's find a place where people will accept that there's going to be people there. Right. And we, this was still yeah. against, this was still when you really it was illegal. So we were, uh, we were a speakeasy of, of, so to speak of uh, real estate investors getting together and, and talking. And, and anyway, we, we had, uh, we had a lot of fun doing it and we learned a lot and we were able to bring people together that have been isolated for a long time. I, I'm dude, I, I freaking love it. You know, so when back in January, when we kicked off, you know, there was pivoting to, to the virtual model being in, in multiple markets. So at that time I was, uh, I was in three markets, uh, mainly doing it. Um, I had some stuff internally with the business. We had built a small portfolio and we're managing and servicing this portfolio. Right. And one of the things that I realized is I had massive turnover in my team. Hmm. So I literally, I don't think, I think, like my whole team turned over. So I realized, look, the, the results that we're getting are not what we want. And the properties that we're buying are not the properties I want. Um, and the strategy that I'm, I'm doing is, is not what I want in the end result. So what I found is I had been running and gunning for a year and a half. And I realized I didn't like the trajectory that I was going. And so for me, you know, it was like, okay, I've, I've built some of these networks throughout the past. I've been part of mastermind groups. I'm connecting, man, I need to set back and I need, I need the right people in the right seats and I need the right business operating system and the right numbers so I can track every single person. You know, one of the things that I've run into that's been a huge problem for me, Marty, is I'm going and, and because I'm kind of a visionary type and I'm just a run at the wall as fast as possible, I tend to be the guy who's like, let's throw everything against the wall and just see what sticks. Well, the problem with that is if you do that for so long, um, you don't create a replicatable process, right? You don't, one of the guys I like, you don't create linear growth. And a lot of people think, hey, the system creates explosive growth. That's not true. What a, what a system does, systems and processes creates a linear growth where whatever result you're getting, it creates a baseline. Right. And that baseline can then be adjusted where you have like, think of a dial, right? Think of even the gas line on this fire, right? I can, I can pull it down and it'll, it'll detract, right. And it'll turn off or I can turn it up and it'll go, it'll go full. Um, that's what a process or a system does, right. Where I can, I can turn it up and it can, it can add influx or I can turn it down, but it creates a, a linear process. And so what I found was, Hey, we have a lot of chaos in a lot of different areas. I've got, you know, 50 something properties we're managing and one person managing them. I've got, you know, a number of them not paying and not a streamlined foreclosure process. I've got, um, I've got a dispo system where we've got a few different people selling our properties. I've got acquisitions. I've got one acquisition coordinator and then that person left and then I'm training this and a non-consistent training platform. 
So in, in my case, we're doing a lot of business, but a lot of it is chaos, right? So what I decided is, you know what? I need to simplify, streamline this, and uh, and I want I need to choose the direction I want my next five, 10, 15 years being, because I've been in this business now for eight years, right? And we've had lots of success and a lot of good things, but what we haven't had is we haven't had me being able to kind of decide or review and, and, and make changes. It's been a lot of me doing different jobs and training. And so at the beginning of this year, guys, I, I said, you know what, I am going to start systemizing. And I had to pick one thing. And what that looked like is I decided, you know what, I'm going to systemize everything to do with acquisitions, seller direct acquisitions. We're going to create a system that is literally a dial up, dial down, where we can plug people in, connect with them, uh, train them, even new people to walk through the acquisition process of our company, right? And, uh, and man, that focus has taken about four months to come up with what the training platform is going to look like. What does, how do you know, and what are the measures going to be? And how do you know if someone's a right fit or not? What are the techniques that you teach them? And what are the metrics is that we really do? Because guys, I, I think it's one of the biggest problems is you plug someone in and you don't track me that, Hey, as long as deals are coming in, what that looks for. So now how much does it cost per deal? What are your lead intake? What's your marketing side? What is that funnel building that out for linear growth? So that way now your company or my company really is not, it's, it's not relying on either me or one other person. Because a lot of the time, what I've done in the past in my system creation and system creation has been a, I have a love hate relationship with it. And I'm just, I'm just being transparent with you guys is, a lot of times it's like, yo, let's let's build this system, Marty. Like, let's build it. Come on, man. Go and do this, right? And so what happens is I'll get a freaking rock star dispo guy. I'll get two acquisition guys. I'll get an admin. And then we do business together in a certain way, right? But what happens is a year later, the dispo guy takes another takes another job. And what happened was we didn't systemize it. The system was a person and right. that person was a linchpin. Right. And when that person pulls out, I realized, dude, I don't have any training. I don't have this. This guy's been here. This guy's been with me for two years or a year or three years. Right. And now all of a sudden it's like, yo, my whole system is missing a wheel. When I plug someone in, it's based on how good that next person is. And when you're building a system, when, like, and this is something I've looked it can't be around a specific person. We've got to be able to systemize those roles and responsibilities and cross train and figure out, okay, what is the timeline for the person sitting there? How am I going to replace them? How do I make sure I'm the one driving this and I'm not just reliant on them? Man, these are a lot of things that this year I've been addressing and saying, you know what? Let's build something that can be bigger than, bigger than me, bigger than me as a leader, that I can accomplish the financial goals of the people that I'm working with as well as myself and say, okay, let's build a business that's not just, hey, we're doing a few deals, but that we're gradually scaling, doing consistent deals over time. And so that's kind of what that looks like. But a lot of that comes back, dude, I, and a lot of people here, this is not the fun everyday stuff. Yeah, this is, and this is like the absolute business side of things. Like this is when people go, well, what's the business look like? And what, this is it. It's the tough stuff. This is not the sexy getting a deal stuff. This is how though you can scale business, how you can make sure that you are really getting every ounce of your business, uh, you know, making sure that it's just, it's effective, right? And not just- right a spray and pray type thing. Ronnie, let me ask you, because this is one of the tough things that I, I know you probably went through doing this. You know, when you said, hey, I'm just going to focus on this, right? That's got to be tough because if you're the type of guy, and I think you are, where you want to be in control over a lot of the other stuff, but you knew you probably couldn't, right? So, but, but that is so important to be like, hey, I'm going to take this on and let all the other stuff be chaos, right? So I'm going right. to take acquisitions on as the thing that is going to be the most important task. 
And then disposition is just going to still be a kind of a mess right now, but I can't be worried about two of these fires. I mean, give me, walk me through that. Yeah. Yeah. There's a, there's a Russian quote that says, um, I think it's a Russian quote. It's I think what made it famous was the book, the one thing, if you chase two rabbits, you'll, you won't catch either. Right. And, uh, and the idea that you can only be focused in one spot and that's what happens is when you decide to get into the nitty gritty of like a system per se, a lot of us, we want to just steal. I want to just steal what everybody's doing. Right. I want to, I want to reach out to the other guys in the industry and be like, yo, what's your system? Let me do it. The problem with that is even if you steal the basics, there's little intricacies that are going to be specific to you. Right. And so I watched a video not too long ago and he talked about like problem solving and it's like, it's like my son's into Legos. Right. And I've got like all the freaking Legos downstairs. It's always a mess. But he'll be building something. It's like, okay, what is this? What is this thing? Um, and the guy I was listening to was like, you know, once you figure out that piece, it all comes together. And you're like, yes. Well, that's what happens. But that focus is on one thing. That's that's the issue. Is dispo, and and this has been my this has been my experience the last four months. I'm 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 putting together this system. Okay, this goes here. This goes here. Okay, this goes here. This is my reporting. When text messages come into our system, um, I'm going to have our VA come here. They're going to respond from whatever number called them, but, right? Like you're in the nitty gritty, making sure, okay, the follow-ups happen this. Here are our buckets. Okay, this person's interested. We need to cultivate them. This person declined our offer. We're going to reach back out to them in 60 days, but, right? Like you're in the nitty gritty. What happens is, so I decided my company's not doing dispo. Nobody in my company is doing dispo. We're going to outsource that crap. I'm going to find somebody local and I'm going to connect with them and I'm going to create a partnership and they're going to sell my stuff. So we did that, found that we started doing that. And there were some issues. I'm not going to get into all the issues right now, but we had to live with that chaos and handle it while I'm sitting here focused this. Cause I want this to be a dial system. I want this to, to be something I can rely on as a business owner, right? If there's only one thing I decided as a business owner, I want to make sure that I can find and contract deals reliably. It's not respond. It's not just one person. It's a system and it's automatic where I can get my goal was I wanted to make sure that I could get three to five properties per month or excuse me, per week contracted every single week. Right. And then the dispo side, how many of those are we going to be able to sell? How many of that, what's it going to look like? I didn't know. Like straight up, I was just like, you know what? We're just we're just gonna take it and try to try to throw that. We're just gonna do whatever we can. So, well, what that's happened, and I only have the last three months number because I just looked at it. The guy who's been selling, or or let me not say the guy, um, in selling my properties, it's created in three months a gap where the profit that our company has not realized from selling is like over forty thousand dollars right? And three months of wholesaling where other people have made that off of me. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying, okay, I've been doing this. Now this is the opportunity cost, right? This is, this is, Hey, I focused on this. I'm getting this down, right? This is, this whole system is happening. Like we've spent a freaking ton of time on this. Well, now that it's like, okay, well, now how do we maximize some of that profit? Well, what's amazing about that is that has created a, a gap of finances that we know, hey, we've sold this many properties and this is how much money other people have made off of us in three months, mm -hmm. right? So, so now I'm thinking, okay, well, that means I can hire somebody and I have $40,000 of potential playroom where I can say, okay, I can hire somebody and I can create my commission structure. I can create their base pay. I can create blank. And if I, if I cut this in half, I'm winning, but really I want to cut this by, you know, I want to cut this down to a quarter or less, sure. right? I want to make this systemizable because the other side is building up that system might take some time. That guy has a system. Those people, they have relationships, they have systems, they have all of that. I need to build that from the ground up. So there's a time frame. And so that's where we're transitioning is, okay, what does that system look like? And now we're taking, okay, this one's finished. This one, I can get A to Z. I can get a contract from marketing to contract in $2,100, right? That's where we're system at. It's $2,100 per contract in our system right now. So I know that 
basically $2,100 gets me a contract. I know what our average wholesale fee is. I know all those details that I've been keeping. Now it's, okay, how can I, one, maybe make our profit go up or sustain it from an average by being able to sell it to the buyers who want to buy and want our inventory and create those relationships in an in-house system? Well, now I've been able, I'm the goal is to close those by the end of the year where it's like, okay, now it's closed and we have a tight system from acquisition dispo and then our internal processing, we've outsourced. Again, I outsource pretty much everything to a third-party company where, hey, what's the opportunity cost there? Okay, that's what the cost is. Is that something I want to focus on or do I want to focus on something else? And if you can take this small approach, you can gradually take your company and you can streamline it. The one thing I want to warn, though, is if you're getting started, if you guys are new and you're jumping in, don't systemize now, right? You can only, only systemize after you have like stuff happening, right? Get out there, take action, right? Get some deals coming in, make stuff happen, start creating problems. And then once you walk through the steps, right? I've, I've walked through these steps for eight years now, right? And I've created multiple systems that have all collapsed and had to rebuild and then collapsed again. And then COVID happened. And then, and then it was like, oh, we're going to do all creative financing. And we built a, you know, I've bought in over 300 properties with creative financing. Then, okay, we're going to sell that portfolio. We're going to do wholesaling. We're going to do, right? All these things are different. But once you know the steps, step one, step two, step three, step four, step five, and then, okay, here are the intricacies with our current things. This is what I want a VA to do. This is what I want this guy to do. Okay, we need an in-house guy here. Once you kind of do that, then you can figure out, okay, how can I systemize it? And then you can figure out how do I make it efficient? But all that, it takes time and it takes resources, specifically money, right? Like it takes resources. So if you don't go the, man, get some, do, do 10 deals. Yeah. I was going to say that, Ronnie, you really got to take the action first. Like this is, you know, or, or I should say, take the action. This is, uh, don't let this be the hang up on not taking the action and, and making, you know, the, the stuff that you can control, you know, you might not know, Hey, I don't even know about a system yet or all that. That's fine. You need to go out and, and maybe just do the door knocking and pick up the phone and call and get the deal. You, Hey, by the way, you might have to do it all by yourself for a little bit of time. Right. And, and right. you should, that way, you know, when you give it up, exactly what you're giving up. And then you can. Well, and can, can I speak to that? Can I speak yeah. to that? Here, here's what happens when you build a system. And this is what happens when you've even had success too, guys. Let's say you're doing acquisition and let's say you're rocking it, right? Let's say you're contracting properties to do this and you decide to hire an acquisition coordinator. You guys are hiring an acquisition coordinator. And all of a sudden you've been doing, you've been doing 80 calls a week, uh, right? Um, let's say maybe not a week. Let's say, let's say you're doing 25 calls a day, right? And let's say you're working six days a week. So what's that? I don't even know what that is. 150, 150 calls a week, sure. right? And let's say out of those 150 calls, you're talking to, um, let's say you have 30 conversations, right? And let's say a conversation is everything over five minutes, right? And you've had 30 of them in a week. You hire a guy. You're like, all right, bro, let's step in. Let's do this. And then all of a sudden that dude has uh, 40 calls a week. He has like 10 conversations. And you're like, dude, what the freaking heck's going on? Like, come on. And they're like, dude, he's so busy. And I've got this, and I got this, and this guy, and blah, blah, blah. And now you're arguing, like, well, I think we can do more, but they're not doing more, right? You're like, what the freaking heck? Why aren't you calling these people? Like, what's blah, 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 blah? Well, if you hire people or you build the system first, you don't know how much one person can or can't do. Right. And, and what you got to remember is as a business owner, you're probably going to have, especially the new people here, you're going to have more fire than your guy. And you got to figure out what is, what's the standard I'm going to hold my people to. Is it going to be exactly what I do? Or is it going to be a little bit less? Right. I think there's a, there's another quote that like people, people will rise to your lowest standard and they'll, they'll double fail. Like whatever your weakness is, they'll be twice as bad. <laughs> Right. So it's like understanding, hey, man, what are my standards and what are the standards I'm going to hold people to? Because if you build it first and you're like, yo, go do that. Tell me what you can do. And they're kind of half assing it. Right. And then you build your system around kind of a, 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 
a process that's not working very well, well, your results aren't going to come. And so even in my acquisition build, I'm like, no joke. We basically put everybody on hold and it was like two weeks because we had like this reoccurring theme in acquisitions. Like, this is how many calls that can happen. This is, I was like, you know what? I think that's low. That's whack. All right. You know what? Go on vacation. Do this. I'm going to figure this out. We jumped in, me and one other guy on my team. We're like, all right, let's see how many we can get. And we like tripled the number. Right. And it was like, okay, this is the new standard. Right. And so what it does is either people will rise or they'll be like, you know what? I don't know if this is for me. Like, I don't know if I fit in the team. And then you can work out, okay, well, what does that look like? Is there another, are you on the right bus? Let's put you in a different seat, which I did. I took somebody, put them in a different seat. Are you on the wrong bus? Okay, this is what exiting looks like. And you walk through. But guys, when you're starting, you need a lot of action. Like just take some action. And you know, like guys who are watching this, you know if you are really working or not. I know the weeks that I've been lazy, right? I know how much time I've wasted. I know how much time I've been focused. And the more focused energy that we can do, like when you're out there working, the more calls that you can do, the standards that you hold, the amount of people you talk to, you can hold yourself accountable to that and say, how many leads did I get this week? What did that look like? And, and I'll, give you, I'll give you guys a, a, a quick tip. There's three things you should jump into initially. One, you need to increase your knowledge. If you're new to real estate, dude, watch YouTube videos, watch videos like this. Like literally go to YouTube University and treat it like your own curriculum at a college. Absorb all the knowledge. Find out that. Figure out how much money you have to spend. If you have none, YouTube it is. Find out the people you like by their course, right? The people that are at. Learn, learn, learn. Number two, build your network, right? Reach out to me. Reach out to Marty. Reach out to people locally. Hey, this is what I'm doing. This is what I got. Bring value. Hey, I'm working this. I have some deals. Could you help me sell them? Hey, I've got this going on. I can help you. Hey, uh, I want to jump in and I want to learn the business. Can I come work for you for free, right? Can I come sell your properties? Can I come work acquisitions? Can I come do blank? Here's what I'm willing to do here, right? Whatever that is, connect with as many people as possible. And then number three, focus on lead generation. I don't care what you do. I don't care if it's driving for dollars. If you don't have any money. It's handwriting the notes. I don't care if it's door knocking foreclosures that you pull off. I don't care if it's mailing tired landlords from prop stream. I don't care if it's cold calling. Whatever it is, pick one and do it consistently over and over and over again. You will get a deal. Those are if you're getting started, that's that's the formula. Learn 20 hours a week. Seriously, like learn 20 hours a week, all real estate, not other books initially. All real estate, learn the business. Number two connect with five people a day that are not sellers, just other, just connect, 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 plant seeds, get your name out there. And number three, have a consistent, uh, just a consistent routine of lead generation, whether that's two hours of cold calling, it could be driving for dollars in your city or in your neighborhood or in neighborhoods twice, three times a week or every day. Initially, it could be sending out direct mail. If you do it, how much money do I have? How can I do consistent deals over the next month? All like create that routine and it will change your life. One deal makes you 10,000 bucks. Boom. Your life has changed, right? Even if you're, if you're working full time, whatever that is, make it consistent. Yeah. Um, This stuff is very uh, simple to do, right? Like those things you just said, but it's also very simple not to do, right? Why is that? Why is that? Well, it's, it's because, and I don't know, I don't know if it's because people don't think that they can. It's a lack of confidence. It's uh, it's you're not going to get that ten thousand dollar deal the day that you do those things that one time, right? I think that's what it is. It's people right. don't want people are not willing to, you know, let like I I always I love the let the score take care of itself, right? I mean, if you're doing these things, you just you let that. The money will come, right? But you got to yep. do those things. I'm with you on one thing in particular, and it's people are not focusing enough. I don't, I don't think on revenue generating activities, and that is number one 
lead generation, right? Or, you know, doing those things like it's like, well, I, you know, I, I did this, I know I've talked to a realtor today and I got my website set up and I got the, it's like, you're, you're not spending enough time on RGA, revenue generating activities. And I think, cause all the other stuff is, it can be like, it can, it can be worked on. Right. But this is the stuff that gets you paid to like, keep it going, keeping the fire going That's right. and, and really how important it mo is momentum, right. In, in business, Ronnie, it's like, you need to get the money in the door. It's got yes. to happen. Right. Yes. A good friend of mine, he said, um, focus on activities that allows you to get a piece of paper in front of somebody that when they sign it, it makes you money, <laughs> yeah. right? Like a, a really good friend of mine, I've known him for a number of years. Pretty simple. Um, it's like, what are the activities that'll get you in front of somebody that can sign a piece of paper that'll make you money, right? Like that's, if, if, if you need to boil it down, if RGAs is like a term, you're just like, I don't know what RGAs is. It's in real estate, you get people to sign a piece of paper and that piece of paper has the ability to make you money, right? Like that's it. That's what you're looking for. That's going to be my um, book. It's going to be one page. It's just going to say that it's going to be my book. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so it, it's funny. So, so eight years ago, eight years ago, hey, I Mark's joining in us. my Mark, man, oh, how are you guys doing? Doing good. Yeah. Doing good. Right. I like the fireplace, Ronnie. Oh, thank you. I'm redoing my office downstairs. It's being painted right now. So I had to, I had to change to the living room. <laughs> very nice. Very nice. I'm on my way to the airport. Heading Where are you to, going? Uh, I'm heading to Africa on a safari. Oh my goodness! This dude's yeah, going to freaking we're Africa. Sleep out. We're sleep out in the, with the. Uh, I've never done this before, so it's gonna be kind of cool. Nice. You gonna? You gonna? So a buddy of mine went on a went on a safari like uh, I think it was like ten years ago. And they were going on like the jeep, and you know, like through the through the jungle or whatever. And he has a video of there's a lion walking by the. Uh, <laughs> the jeep and he like puts his hand out there like right over it on the video you need to get a picture like that where you're like yeah, right next to a lion or something very cool very cool <laughs> come here it's gonna be a long flight i gotta fly from here to newark three hours and then from newark down uh almost 16 hours like about 16 hours dude Insane. that's freaking awesome <laughs> have a great time bro i wish i could join you what are you guys chatting about we are talking about breaking down uh, RGAs at the moment, about uh, getting getting into the business. We uh, I mentioned that a friend of mine mentioned that an RGA broken down is get focus on getting in front of people that have the ability to sign a piece of paper to make you money, and uh, and then uh, really just what it looks like to one build a system and where we've been at this year, but two if you're starting. You should uh, you should jump. What would be Mark on your end? I'm gonna put you on the spot since you're driving. Hold what on. is one? Hold on. Yeah. I can't. I'm having a hard time hearing you. Whoops. Okay. What What is one thing? Can you hear me? What is one what thing? Can... What's one thing that you would recommend they do in order to make money? What's one thing they could do consistently? Um, network. Network. Any network. particular. Where would they go? Where would they go to network? Facebook, local groups. What would you recommend? Um, everything. Facebook, um, LinkedIn, um, meetups. Um, that's what really that's really taking me to another level. It's just in all my businesses, not just real estate, but all my businesses is just constantly networking and surrounding yourself and uh, you know with good good quality people. That's kind of what. That's really. You know, if I go back and look at myself in my career when I actually, you know, started out when I was a teenager, I just kind of always was networking and surrounding yourself around those others. And then you just kind of, you become, you become those, you know, what, what do they say? You become what you think, if you will, also within your people that you surround yourself around. Dude, that's good. That's good. That's awesome. So, and I think that's true, right? The top five people that you're connecting with. Like that's who you're going to start thinking like, and their normal activity is going to be our normal activity, right? You're going to be like, oh man, I can steal that. Oh, I can do that. Oh, they're doing that. Oh, this is easy. Right. And you're going to keep doing it. I think you told me, I think it was you when you're starting off connecting, just do five people a week. Yes. Right. 
five people away. Put five people on your calendar a week. And if you can have five people on your calendar a week, there's 52 weeks in a year. Dude, think of how many people that would be. If, if a quarter of them work out, look at how many relationships you've built. I love that, man. I love that. Yep. Marty, so any, any additional thoughts to that? No, and Mark is an absolute beast when it comes to networking. And I may have not known how important it was earlier in my career. And I'm so happy that I took the time to go to the meetings. It is a skill to be in a networking person. You know, you, you got to have some confidence to go, you know, I deserve to be in this group. I, I deserve to be able yeah. to show up to this event. I, you know, I'm, I'm a person that's going to add value to a guy like Ronnie or a guy like Mark, right? You got to kind of think that way. Uh, or in the beginning, if you just need to be someone who just is a wallflower, you got to be someone that's a wallflower. If you're not ready to dance on the floor yet, that's understandable, but you got to get yourself out there at least get into the club, you know, at least go to the event. So it's, uh, I think it is something that will change your business. It will change your life because it will give you confidence. It will, it adds a lot of different things to your person, uh, your just your personal business as well as your your actual business that you probably wouldn't expect. So I, I I'm, a, I'm I just wrote down the five people a week. I think that's great. So Rod, let's uh, let's uh, how about that same question to you? Um, I think I think when I think of networking, I think about how one person, like the power that one person has to change my life. Right. So for me. I used to think, man, if I do all this activity, I'll get all this results. And what I've come to learn, it's kind of like the 80-20 principle, right? It's like 20% of your activity is 80% of your results. And I've come to think of it as like, man, all I need to do. I mean, Mark, I think I think when I when we met in person at the mastermind we were at, like that that meeting, we didn't even spend a whole bunch of time together. But like, think of how much interaction we've had from that one, that one meeting, right? And so when I think about it is, it's not so much about quantity. It's not about knowing 5,000 people, right? It's about, you know, I'm going to go to this group and I'm going to meet one, I'm going to meet a bunch of people, but my goal is out of this weekend to connect with one person and to really kind of hook into a relationship with them right? Maybe two, but you can't spend that much time. So I might go out to lunch. They might ride with me in the car. We might go here and I kind of attach myself to them. That sounds like a really bad term. If they don't want to connect with you, then don't do it. But like I connect with them and then that ends up springboarding into, I, so when I think of, when I think of relationships, that's what's been my kind of my success is it's not that I've had a bunch it's that the ones that I've connected with and I've gone deep with, it's like, hey, let me solve a problem for them. Let me help them. And let's collaborate together. Man, I've made I've made so much money. So, guys, I got to run. That. All right. Take it easy, Mark. See you, Mark. Guys. Kick into that. What, what would you say? Mark said, uh, Mark said networking. We talked a little bit about that. What would you say the number one RGA when you got started that you did that led to uh, led to profit? On oh, road? that that's easy for us. It was give me a list and let me let me cold call it. Give me a list and let me text it. And that that was it. Just get a list. High equity, absentee, tired landlord, and start making magic. And what's beautiful about the cold call is that for people who don't have any experience in cold calling and sales or even in real estate, you'll learn so much through that cold call. Like you'll learn, yeah, you may not get anywhere with Larry, right? But he's going to tell you some stories and you're going to pick on, pick up some problems that he has, even if he doesn't want to sell and he's like, no, I'm good, blah, blah, blah. But he might give you something that you can then take. No, I know he will give you something that you can then take and then go implement in your next phone call. I'd be like, Hey, you know, that sounds just like Larry, I'm, Ronnie, I, I get it, buddy. I know that, that, that there's a problem. You know, I just got the phone with a guy, similar situation. His name is Larry. He goes, Marty, you know, I'm this, 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 and this, and that's why I'm thinking about selling. I'm sure it's the same for you, Ronnie. 
Yes, it would be. And you just start picking up things. You, you start being able to tell stories. And isn't that what this is about, Ronnie? It's about being able to tell stories so that you can right. start connecting and you can start getting deals. So yeah, get a list and start calling and texting. You know, That's mine. That's mine. You, yeah. You know, what's funny is so eight years ago, I was working at Chase and I think it might be nine years ago now. I was working at Chase and while I was there, I got into real estate and I'm thinking, okay, how can I do this? And to go along with the signed piece of paper to make you money, I realized that the other person across the table, the person with the house, what stood in the way between them and my family's financial future was this person saying yes, right? And, and them saying yes was really not so much about technique, but was about them connecting with me and wanting to sell their house to me. So I developed very early on before I knew sales techniques, before I knew all this, that, you know what, I'm just going to sit in this chair and I'm not going to get up until this person says yes or kicks me out. And I remember one time I'm sitting in the kitchen and I'm talking to this guy. I was there for like three hours. And if Arthur Martinez is on this, is watching, he was there with me sitting in the, in next to me. And uh, we're sitting down, we're talking to this guy and we're going back and forth. We're talking, we're talking. And we're there for like three hours. And the guy's like, okay, yeah, we'll think about it. And he stands up, right? And when someone stands up, what does that mean? Hey, we're done, right? And I'm sitting there. I'm sitting at the kitchen table. And he stands up. I'm like, oh, let me ask you a question. Hey, by the way, do you have any water to drink? I I could really use a cup of water. So he goes over to the fridge, opens the fridge, grabs a bottle of water, comes out, gives it to me. I open it up. And he sits back down. And we sit there for another hour and a half talking about the property, about what their goals are, about what's look, they really wanted to sell, right? Well, now we're about three hours in and we finally come to the point. He's like, all right, yeah, I'm, I'm willing to sell. And we pull out the paperwork. We go over all the paperwork. We're walking through it. He starts signing and we're going to do sub two. And the sub two contracts are like 40 pages long, right? They're freaking huge. So he signs the normal purchase agreement. He gets about halfway through the sub two paperwork and he's like, he looks at his wife, who actually wasn't next to him. She was behind us. And he like looks at his wife past me. And I don't see what his wife does. But he goes, nah, I'm done. I'm done. Get out. I don't want to sign. I don't." And he throws the paperwork ahead of him. He's like, I'm done. I'm done. I'm not signing anything else. Blah, 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 blah. And we left. And we didn't get the deal. The point of the story, though, is a person on the other end of the phone saying yes or in their house like the power of one transaction can be, do, guys, I've done one transaction that's made me $100,000, right? I've done one transaction that made me $7,000. My first deal, I made three grand and I had spent five grand at that point, right? Trying to learn this crap. And, uh, but I made 3,000 bucks. I'm like, dang, this is freaking awesome. We can, we can learn. So my number one thing, when you're sitting with somebody or you're talking, don't try to figure out the most efficient way to talk to them, right? The most efficient way to talk to them is to take as much time to connect and understand and walk through what they're doing, what they're looking like and trying to come to a yes. Because if that yes takes three 45 minute conversations and it makes you $25,000, it's three 45 minute conversations, guys, right? As you're building a system, you will develop, hey, this is kind of what works. Okay. And lots of people have different ideas, but you'll figure out what works for you and your system. Take the time, connect with the individuals once you create the leads. And when you're in front of them, don't try to maximize them. Hey, are you looking to sell? Connect with them. What are you looking to do? You will find opportunities that people with VAs and systems will miss because people will take a VA and be like, ah, no, I'm good. And then they talk to a normal person like you and they'll be like, hey, blah, blah, blah okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, this is what's going on. And you'll connect and they'll be like, you know what? what? What are you willing to pay? Let's see if we can work together. And they'll just open up. And that that right there can change your life. It will change your life. That feeling of, why don't you come out to the house? Hey, what? let's talk about it a little bit more. Let's do blank. Um, that right there, I would say, is the, is the key critical moment in the deal. So as we're wrapping up, 2021, we've accomplished, you know, we've come 10 months in. If there was one thing that you've done, whether we've talked about it or not, that you would want to, you would want to impart or leave with them one strategy, technique, 
connecting that you've seen success with that you'd recommend anybody implement, what would it be? I would say get on to social media and let people know that you're a real estate investor. If, if everybody in your family doesn't know, if this is something that you do, right? And your aunts and uncles don't know, you're not doing it right. You're not letting enough people know. Let people know what you do. It's going to increase your confidence and it's going to let the energy of what you're building out and let people help you build. People want to help, you you know, people, a lot of people want to help you, right? You got to let them know what you do. So get out there and tell people that if you're an investor, let them know. Because if your family doesn't know, no one knows. That's right. Dude, that's so good. And you know, that reminds me, I reached out, I reached out to my family a while back and I was just like, you know, I have this opportunity. I could give it to somebody else, but if you're interested, maybe we can work something out. Here's my, here's my track record. Obviously you've been knowing I've been doing this for a number of years now. And uh, they're like, you know what? We would like to be that for you. And it was an opportunity for me and my family to do business together uh, rather than me giving that money to someone else. And it's like, Hey, this is what we're doing. So everyone's around, like the people who want to see you win, connect with them, tell them, Hey, this, this is my opportunity. This is what I'm doing. If you don't want to do it, that's cool. Um, I was looking at a property to buy in Ireland not too long ago. And, uh, I did the same thing. I reached out to some people. I was like, Hey, here's an opportunity that I have. Um, this is what it looks like. Here's the property. This is what it looks like. It's on 124 acres. It's by the ocean. It's got this, it's got an underground tunnel. It's blah, 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 blah. All this cool stuff. I was like, this is the price. Um, I don't know if I'm going to buy it, but if I did, would you be interested? And they told me no. Right. And that's okay. They're like, you know what? They actually entertained it for a couple of days. And they're like, you know what? We really like what you're doing. We're behind you on other things, but on the Ireland deal, like we're not in, right. We don't, we don't want to do that. And it's like, cool. Um, and that's completely okay, guys. Like people can tell you no, and it's okay. Right. And just, but just let them know, Hey, I have this opportunity. Would you be interested? If it's no, that's cool. I can take a no. It doesn't ruin my conscience. It doesn't blow. It doesn't make me feel terrible or like a bad person. Like if you feel that way, when you ask people, you need to do some internal soul searching, right? Like it's going to happen. You need to, you know, maybe, maybe go and listen to, you can't hurt me by David Goggins or something, right? Like if, if that stuff is, is hard for you, um, man, expose yourself to more because just that, Hey, I have this opportunity. Would you be interested? Hey, I'm exploring this. This is what it looks like. Hey, I'm doing this. This is what it looks like. And if the more you do that, you're going to have like all kinds of people tell me no all the time, guys. Like Marty has people tell him no all the time. We're not like some magic people where everyone we talk to says, yes, the people you idolize and that we idolize and we think people don't tell them yes all the time. (laughs) Right? Like, they they hear no and it's okay just hear that so i would just i would recommend that as you're getting started really get focused the power of focus in your business um pick pick one thing to focus on if it's cold calling do cold calling don't pick two if you realize man i can do this and this don't do that knock it down to one and there's a there's a there's a an exercise that you can do be like okay Here's all the main things that could happen and put them all on sticky notes and put the sticky notes on the table. I've done this when I've been confused, put them all on the table and be like, okay, what are the things I could do without? I could do without that. I could do without that. I got this exercise from clockwork, which is a shout out to Gabe because Gabe had me read that book. And it's like, okay, what could I do without here? Okay. I, I can do without that. Okay. I can do without that and focus on one thing all the way down to one and let everything else be chaos. Just let it happen and then spend a focused amount. And when I say focus, pick a few times a week, every day to spend an hour to three hours per session on that one thing. And then let the rest of your time be other stuff, but let that take up a huge chunk of your time where you're just focused on that and everything else falls into the side outside of that. If it's cold calling, three hours a day, five days a week, six days a week. If it's um, figuring out your acquisition conversation, three hours a day, five days a week. If it's a system, three hours a day, five days a week. 
right? Like whatever that one thing is, that's your focus time. And uh, focus on that. The power of focus is just, there's a reason why everyone says the overnight successes took years to accomplish. It was because there was years when they were in their basement, freaking in a place that looked like crazy with orange, crazy carpet, right? Like sitting down there with their, not cutting their hair for five days, you know, in their pajamas, plugging away or on the phone, right? Like sitting there being like, oh my God, blah, 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 blah. And talking to like, dude, I botched that call. Uh, you know, like, <laughs> dude, everybody does say. that. Right. So that would be my, that would be my takeaway. So um, to wrap up, we're here every Tuesday. We're talking about tips, strategies. Our goal is to take what we're doing in our business and add it to you guys, right? To take the, the power plays, the things, the pivots, the little things that we're doing that cause the biggest increase and in giving that to you guys and allowing you guys to uh, to succeed and to really shortcut the process. Um, if you have questions, feel free to put them in the comments. Reach out to Mark, reach out to Marty, reach out to Gabe, reach out to me if you have questions. We want to help. Um, we get questions, people ask us to do deals. There's different things that happen, whatever you need. Even if you just want us to talk about something on a show, um, reach out to us. We'd love to connect with you guys and uh and figure out a way to help we're uh we're in this to add our strategies and help you guys out so every tuesday 12 eastern time here that's real estate power play guys have a good day this has been another episode of real estate power play guiding real estate entrepreneurs to a brighter future if you liked what you heard consider subscribing wherever you listen to your podcast or follow us on youtube at real estate power play